Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto anime review. This one's going to be for episode 169, which is called A Joint Mission with the Sand. And this was another very, very good episode. I really appreciated in this episode them bringing Team Inoshika Cho into things. Us having kind of like a different aspect of the plot coming in with, you know, Shikadai's mission to go to the, the Land of Wind and, you know, join up with uh, Shinki's team and go on this mission to retrieve like the remnants of the puppets from one of the previous arcs combined with then on the Konohamaru side of the episode them revealing that oh the scientist guy from the Mitsuki arc is here and is a member of Kara as well so that they're making some really nice connections uh, into the previous arcs I'm not going to put too much you know stock into a lot of this just because they are connections, yes, but they're not the like um, like deepest and strongest connections we have. So it, it's nice that they're doing that, but at the time, like there was really no sense that they are actually are connected. So until they explain the significance of those connections, uh, it's just nice to see. But um, like I said, this episode accomplished quite a bit, bringing uh, Shikadai, Team Ino Shikacho into things. But also showing us Borto and Sarda at a little bit of an impasse when it comes to their growth of, with their abilities, trying to improve. And that was quite interesting because Borto seems to be able to very, very consistently do the wind style Rasengan, but he still can't put the power into it. So my interpretation of this, because he did do a relatively powerful one at the end of the last episode, is that when he's um you know at full strength uh full chakra like rested my impression is that he can probably do one maybe two wind style rasengans that have a decent amount of power to them but overall he's still not happy with the power that he's putting out so i find it very interesting that the preview for next week's episode is calling the episode like the new rasengan that he is going to have to advance this even further which I actually like because I was a little bit like, wait, we've already seen Winstall Rasengan before. Is this what they're going to commit to as Borto's new um, move? No, he's going to have this to use if he needs to, but we're getting a new Rasengan. And I'm very interested to see how they do it, especially with what Kakashi said to Borto that, you know, you, you don't have the chakra to be able to put the power into it like naruto does so how he, is he going to do this he mentions like the line is like um, unless you move mountains now i'd interpreted that as like naruto has enough chakra that he can basically move mountains the amount of power he can output and borto doesn't have access to that when borto sort of repeated it it felt like it was more along the lines of like move mountains in terms of the amount of effort that you're going to put into doing the training um, so we'll, we'll see if there is any sort of like clever, you know, interpretation of what Kakashi said. I'm not really sure if we're meant to read too much into that or not. But it looks like the direction they're going on Borto's side of things is that uh, Shikadai, after his team's defeat, is going to come back. And now, basically all of the Genin, I guess, are going to realize that they're not good enough. They're all going to have to work together, help each other to train. And maybe the different perspectives among all the different uh, Genin and also Chunin, uh, Shigadai is a uh, Chunin of course, are going to work together and they'll all increase each other's power by sharing abilities and training each other in specific things. Uh, we'll see exactly what direction they take. My guess is that we're building up to the Rainbow Rasengan which we see in the opening. And Right now, the only direction I can see for this happening is that this is Borto incorporating multiple chakra natures into the Rasengan. Because we know Borto has access to, uh, I think it's water, wind, and lightning styles uh, that he, ha he can use. So if he puts all three of them into the Rasengan, I'm guessing that might make the wind style Rasengan. And so by having he'll increase power through sort of a technical approach rather than just pumping more chakra in and it'll just be this almost you know keke tota style rasengan i don't know uh it, it, it's it's weird it, it, it's hard to fully picture how they do it and especially how like maybe shigadai is going to help him get to that point but 
we're going to find out in the next episode, I guess, how he comes to get that uh, Rasengan. Um, I, uh, we got very little stuff, ultimately, with uh, Sarada and her training with Sasuke, just that she's still trying to do the, you know, dodging the ball bearings uh, exercise. And she's dodging some of it, so she's making a little bit of progress, but it's not enough. She needs to make a big leap in progress so that she can really open up some new jutsu to herself. And the tease for next week with her seems to be that Sasuke goes, going, is going to switch up from, you know, choking ball bearings at her to now throwing kunai at her. So obviously that increases the danger factor of the dodging exercise greatly. Which I guess will put Sarda at more risk, which I guess will heighten her emotions and maybe just the fear of the situation. That will be the emotions that she needs to awaken the second Tomoe of her um, uh, Sharingan. Uh, that I think is potentially the direction that they're going in, that Sasuke is going to have to push her quite hard, put her at risk to get her to that next step. And then once she has the second Tomoe, she can learn the Chidori and I guess some other Jutsu as well. Um, but we, we still need to see how that happens. How is she going to adapt to that and you know, the risk of you know, facing a, a torrent of kunai like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess from there we need to move into the uh, Shigadai section of the episode. So obviously he is sent on a mission uh, with his team, of course, to go to the Land of Wind... Uh, and team up with uh, Shinki's team to try and find the remnants of the puppets that they fought during the Urashiki slash Shukaku arc uh, from not too long ago. So, okay, fair enough, you know, they'd want to retrieve something like that. Shikadai's going because he was the one who fought that puppet, and the other team is going because they know the area surrounding the uh, you know, sand village quite well. Makes sense. But interestingly, they stop along the way to go and get something to eat. Well, Chocho does. And Deepa's in there eating. And he just walks out. He walks straight by uh, Archunin and Genin. And they, they know something's up, that like he's a unique person. But they don't know for sure it's the, the person that Borto fought. Because they, they don't have the description and stuff like that. They weren't there. They walk in and, like before, Deepa has killed everyone in there. He, he did this in the previous episode, killing everyone at like a bar. He's done the same thing here. And so, it's this really dark moment where like the episode's just getting going, Shikadai on a mission, and they walk into this massacre, like blood everywhere, people dead, and they're delayed meeting up with Shinki because they have to report this, of course. Um... There's one interesting moment of just, you know, they lingered on Deepa eating and him looking at the bowl and just a sense of, like, sadness going on. I think I know what they're going for here as, like, a, su a subtle tease to the nature of the Kara members and why they are so strong. I don't want to sort of, like, spoil it if you haven't read the um, manga yet, but um, if that's what I think it is, it's a, it's a nice sort of uh, subtle way to give char character to these uh, Kara members um, but um, yeah then like th this this section of the plot happens relatively quickly we of course get the little argument between the two teams as like you know uh, oh no Sh Shikadai should be in, in charge because he's the only tuning and they're like no Shinki should be in charge because he knows the area but Shinki's ultimately fine with uh, Shikadai leading which is is fine but uh out, uh, you know, looking for the puppet, they find it. But then Deepa finds them. He actually is looking for the puppet as well. And, like, Victor wants him to find it. And it's like, okay, like, what's going on here? Like, what is the, the full connection between all of these arcs? It's, it's kind of interesting how interconnected it's all being. But he is just dominating them. It's like six on one. But he is just going for it here. And... They only stay in the fight because Shinki has his, like, iron sand wall that he can put up. But then Deepa just, you know, commits to doing, you know, kind of machine gun fire with his, um, you know, carbon blocks. And just, you know, p punches straight through it. And then when he goes for some of the big blocks, the heavy blocks that he has, it just goes straight through. And I thought they did a good job of getting across just the raw power that he was putting out. The thing that took out Shinki's teammates was like a pretty devastating blow because no one expected him to break through the shield like so suddenly like that and those two just got wiped out straight away. 
Um, but then similarly, I really appreciated that it was another case of utter defeat for these Genin and Shuni. Like, Ino Shikacho did their usual, you know, distraction, distraction, Shikadai, you know, grabs him with the Shadow Possession. But he just broke out, like, straight away. There, there, there was nothing going on here. Uh, Shinki's attack wasn't powerful enough to damage him. He just, you know, took it straight to the face, but didn't even flinch. Um, just proving that they also, like Borto and his team, don't have anything. And they've witnessed the same experience, the same defeat. Um, which I think is going to be important to have going forward. Because I, I like that contrast of, like, Chocho and Shikadai both witnessed the training and like why are they training so hard we know they suffered a defeat but you know this is really really intense what they're going through now they get it because they experienced the same defeat that you know this is a, a big wake-up call for this generation that they're going on these missions and they're beginning to encounter people who are that strong and they're nowhere near ready yet I really like this as a sort of transition point for like these characters need to grow grow quickly and you know train quite a lot um that it's not just about borto and sarah that that like it feels like sort of everyone is going to have to improve at this point now of course with this generation we pretty much primarily only really have those two teams like you have metal uh, iwabe and denki but they're not like one of the absolute strongest teams uh, in terms of like the characters who are, I suppose in the future going to be like full on Jonin. I think it is Borto and Shikadai's team who are like the main ones who will, you know, be actually fighting a lot of people on like the front lines. So I think it makes sense to to focus on on these two groups for now. Um, but yeah, they 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 did quite a lot here, and it's going to be interesting. Like, will they? incorporate training for Chocho, uh, Inojin and Shikadai into things or will they just assist Boruto and Sarada with their training and then let's not forget that we haven't seen Mitsuki in a few episodes he's going to have to have some training we're going to have to see how his recovery is going and how he can get stronger as well because Sure, he has the sage mode to go to when he needs it, but it's it's such a high risk thing and it damages his body when he does it. He needs to be stronger just normally without damaging himself. So how's that going to go down? So there's, there's still a few episodes left, I think, before we get into the manga content. But I think it's it's at a really good spot right now, which I, I really appreciate. It's 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 so refreshing to have and see the fandom as well so excited about the anime now uh, i've noticed it just in like the views on these uh reviews doing the last few weeks people are invested in the anime now because it's actually covering good content and i i think you see with an episode like this and you contrast this to an episode we had what was it maybe like 10 15 episodes ago chocho needing to train in her butterfly mode and like the episode sort of had the ability to do something really strong in that like Anko was in the episode, Choji was in the episode, but they stretched like a, a seven minute plot across 21 minutes and uh, it was about sweets primarily and the jokey aspects of the characters and the the training, the development was relatively minor in the grand scheme of things and it's just the, the difference between what you can do when you really set up the need for training versus like... uh. Chocho needs to train, we need an episode, let's do it that way. It's a big um, a big difference. And if the quality can be more like this going forward in these uh, sort of non-manga content episodes, you know, I I'm all for it. We need stuff much more like this. Um, any other things? Um, uh, kind of more of a fun moment, but just uh, Chocho obviously likes uh, Shinky, staring him right in the face and acknowledging how handsome he is. So... Uh, I don't know, it seems pretty one-sided. Chinky doesn't really seem in interested in that whole uh, area of things. But um, still, it, it was a fun moment just to see how the sand are very um, you know, serious. But the, the Leaf Shinobi are willing to have a little bit more fun, which I, I did appreciate. But um, yeah, uh, I, I think they're just tonally getting things right here. Uh, Deepa feels like the the kind of perfect villain for this stage of the story where um, he's inflicting like devastating defeats on our younger characters 
um, and we're building up, I suppose, to can they train enough to actually defeat him in the end? Um, and that's a really strong arc of like, will we see Deepa actually get defeated in these episodes and as we transition into the manga arc or not? There's a lot of questions we have, but it's 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 strong. It's good. Um, and hopefully this can continue all the way into the next uh, manga arc and going forward. Because, of course, we're we're waiting for the introduction of Kawaki. That's going to be the really the next, like, I think, really, really big um, part of the Borto story when they finally adapt that. Because he is such an important character in the manga right now. Um, but in just in general in Borto. So him coming into play is going to be a really, really big uh, moment. But um, yeah, uh, they're my thoughts on the episode. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts were. But that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.